Greetings, everybody. This is Patricia Corey coming to you live from the Azores. I'm not sure I'm online this time. Can you just one or two people let me know that you're seeing this because I'm not getting the same information from the computer. There we go. Hi, Shannon. Thank you. Okay, so I am live from the Azores, give, bringing you a, an extended moment of Zen. And today I want to talk about uh, something that's very important to me and hopefully you. And that is the question of near-death experience and, and the bigger question of our immortality, which uh, I am so adamant about our exploring, considering, understanding the immortality of the soul so that we can overcome the fear of our death or destruction or uh, endings rather than seeing the continuum of what the experience of consciousness really is. So again, I'm coming live and that means that if I make any bloopers, it's too bad for me. <laughs> like the last one I did where I said I was a former Beamer and um, no, I wasn't a BMW, I was really a boomer. But you, know, you can't bleep these things out when you're live. So bear with me because, you know, maybe I'm just getting a little senile in my old age. Okay, so I'm going to talk now about, um, well, I'm going to, for the first time ever, I'm going to talk about my own two near-death experiences. But before I get to that, I, I just want to introduce this question uh, for so many people that still don't really get the idea of the other side, immortality, um, whether or not we progress as ascending souls or ascending beings with the planet, with the sun on our own, what the heck is going on here? So um, I'd like to, first of all, recount, uh, wait, I'll backtrack. I'd like to talk about how many people, how many people have had these extraordinary near-death experiences where they see themselves many times, they're in surgery and they see themselves hovering over the table and they hear the surgeons talking about whatever they're talking about. Sometimes they're talking about baseball. Sometimes they're talking about uh, how they're going to make the cut. And these people experience floating above the table, clinging to life, wanting not to go on. Sometimes in the near-death experience, people hear a voice calling them and saying, or, or, the, or they see a light that they are drawn to. And haven't we also been told by some alternative thinkers that you don't want to go to that light, never go to the light, they're reprocessing souls, and that really cracks me up. I mean, we're, if you, if you have a, of a, an experience of such brilliance and love, uh, how could you possibly not want to go to that in your death journey? But I'll get back to that. So, um, they see this light, and then they hear a voice that says, it's not your time yet, and they pop back into their bodies. How many people then, when they come, when they awaken, uh, are experiencing, they speak a new language, they play concerto piano, like they've, ne like they've never touched one before. It's just very exciting, and I think that we need to talk about that a little bit more. So... I, my mother, bless her, when she had a, a surgery that she didn't really need to have, it was an exploratory surgery, they convinced her that she needed, and no amount of psychic input from me telling her that she didn't need it uh, would uh, convince her to not trust the doctor, so she did, and in the middle of the surgery, they nicked a vein, and she started to bleed to death internally. And she was 70-something um, when this happened. So surgery already is not a good idea, much less dealing with this kind of emergency. Meanwhile, I'm sitting in Rome, not, not able to, to get there for a long, long time. And my mother is dying in the hospital. Um, she told me later, she did survive it, thank God. And she told me that she, at some point, she heard the doctors say, Oh, come on, let's just pull the plug. 
And she said she was banging against the wall. No, 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 I'm not dead. I'm not dead yet. Please don't pull that plug. And eventually came back into her body. And um, st for the rest of her time uh, alive, she never really got over that experience because my mother believed she was an atheist. Uh, and she said, I, I, I can't put this together. I mean, what I had on the other side was breathtaking for a moment, but then I knew I couldn't leave you. I couldn't, I couldn't leave. And uh, so fortunately she came back to have another 10 wonderful years. Um, so here's the story that I've never told because I don't really like to focus on stories about me. But uh, since I think it's important, I'm going to share not one but two near-death experiences. The first, by the way, both of them occurred in water. And I'm convinced that that's the way I'm going out. So this will be relevant when I tell you about my dolphin swim, which will be repeated from an earlier conversation. Okay, my first near-death experience I was a kid. I was um, playing swimming with kids, and uh, it was very simple. I just started drowning, and somebody pulled me out. But I remember that suddenly I felt light. And of course, you're so light, there's no gravity in water, really. So to feel lighter than water is pretty bizarre when you're in water. Uh, I felt light. I felt like I had no body. I felt myself swimming out of my body and starting to float away and then looking back and seeing my mother crying and coming back. So that one never didn't make a gigantic impression upon me because I was a kid, but of course I do remember it. But the big one was when I was an older kid, I was 16 and just had my license to drive. So I lived in San Jose, California where I grew up, and I every chance I got, I would go to over the hill to Santa Cruz, about a 40-minute drive, to spend time at the beach where I found incredible solace and where I wrote poetry. I used to sit on the rocks and write poetry and gaze out at the ocean and uh, just, I've always been just so fascinated by the sea. Okay, so there's a beach in Santa Cruz called Davenport Beach. And this beach has on one side, on the left side, when you, when you enter the beach, on the left side, there's a very large cliff. And I used to, uh, sorry, so there's this gigantic cliff that juts out into the water rather straight of these, I don't know what kind of rock it is. And then uh, it falls away and there's a little in inlet. When the tide is out, repeat, when the tide is out, you can walk across this golden sand and then go onward to other rocks and climb quite high. And I used to go there a lot. I just never told anybody that I was going there, but I used to go there and, and just sit there and spend hours uh, on my own there. So this was one of those times. I went and the tide was out and climbed over this gigantic rock, uh, went down past this beautiful little inlet, climbed up the rocks, sat on the rocks, and started writing poetry. And got off, in as I can, in some sort of altered mind, and was very unaware that the tide was rapidly coming in. When I did recognize the fact that these waves were trying to seriously smash up against these rocks, I looked forward, and there was nowhere to go. Because the, at, at the point where I had climbed, it was too high to get anywhere else. And besides, everything was, those rocks were surrounded by waves. And when I looked back at where I had come from, the little inlet that was like a little cave or a cove was now water. And, the way, and it was coming in more and more powerfully. And I remember thinking, am I going to, I'm going to die here? Oh my God. So climb back down, get back down to the point where I climbed onto this one rock mass and waited. I kept looking to st that when the wave would go out, could I run across this little stretch of beach and make it? And that was foolish because 
you don't outsmart nature when it's coming in with that kind of force. But I thought I was clever enough, and I had enough uh, of time between the interims of these big waves to get across. Well, P.S., I didn't make it. I, I ran. I grabbed onto this rock. I remember this horrific, this is going to hurt you psychic healers out there, this horrific uh, shard of, of granite went up my nail. <gasps> I took in water, and the wave grabbed me and threw me out past the rocks, and I and, you know threw me up against the rocks and out to sea. Okay. The next thing I remember is I was in a tube, in a tunnel. I was surrounded by dolphins. And I was, and by the way, if you've read the emissary, that whole image is from this experience. I was swimming in this tube of light and there were dolphins accompanying me and swimming, swimming, swimming. And there was light ahead and uh, music, angelic music. And just at the point where I was feeling the expansion if anyone out there has had this experience you know what I'm talking about when I say the expansion it is that moment when you release yourself from life physical life where you feel your 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 soul just merging with everything everything the, the oneness that we all talk about in it's all its glory and I was just <gasps> surrounded in this immensity and I heard a voice say it's not your time the same thing and this by the way was before way 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 before my mother had that same experience it's not your time you have to go back and I was like no I I, I don't want to go back and I saw my mother's face because we were so so bonded I can't tell you how much I love my mother and boom the next thing that happened, and I hope that you, you trust my integrity enough to believe, at least believe my impression of what happened, whether or not you're able to believe that it actually happened is up to you, okay? I was on back up on this cliff, quite bloody, and I was lying on this cliff, looking up, and there was a man giving me mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. He was... Blue. I don't. I couldn't say anything more about him other than to say that I was looking at his eyes, these blue, blue eyes, and uh, I started to cough up water. And when I looked up again, he was gone. And I looked everywhere. I mean, it's like I'm on this promontory of rock. There's no way this man could have disappeared unless he jumped in the water. There was nowhere on the stretch of beach that I couldn't have seen. He was gone. And a long time later, I realized he was an angel. There's no other possible explanation for me than that. He Somehow I, I was thrown or brought back up out of the ocean and set on this rock and brought back to life. And the question remained in my mind a long time. Was I dead? In other words, when I went... Did the did the wave throw me up on the rock and plop me there and I was dead and came back? I do not know how far out in the water I was or how I got back. All I know is one minute I was grabbing the rock trying to save myself and the next thing I was, uh, well, not the next thing, but the last thing was looking up at this soul, breathing life back into me. And it changed my life. Not to mention how it catapulted my connection to the dolphins. I mean, they were there with me. So now, here's another interesting aspect of this. When I went swimming with wild dolphins the first time, thank you so much, all of you, for tuning in. Uh, I'm not saying hello to each and every one of you because I'm trying to be more focused. Um, when I went to sw swimming with the dolphins back in 2010, here in the Azores, I had this experience of, well, first of all, I jumped into an ocean where 250, 300 bottlenose dolphins were swimming. They were quiet, quiet. 
Dolphins are not quiet. They were calm. They were socializing. They weren't en route anywhere. They were just hanging. And there were no other boats out but me because mine because I had chartered this boat, so I wasn't stuck with the commercial time frame. So it was just me and 300 bottlenose dolphins in the middle of the ocean. And that is the time I may have already told you, you may have heard me in an interview say, I had collected from readers, I had asked people to uh, send me a message for the dolphins and I would bring it. So I had purchased rice paper and I got squid ink and painstakingly, and I do mean painstakingly, wrote out everyone's messages of love and hope for the dolphins, rolled up this girl, I had it in my wetsuit. So when I jumped in and was greeted by, to try to imagine, 300 dolphins in the wild, I pulled it out and all this rice melted in the water, all these messages of love, um, Things like, please don't give up on the human race. We love you. <laughs> Oops, quiet girls. Sorry. Um, and I swam with them until I could swim no more. Bearing in mind, when I, pick, when I bring people to swim with the dolphins, which remind, I'll have to remind myself to mention at the end of this talk, uh, they jump into the water, maybe they get 10 minutes, the dolphins swim away, they come back in the boat, and so on and so on. But I was in the water with them. They did not leave. Thanks, Stacy. They did not leave me. They just swam around me. When I when I took out that scroll, oh my God! And these messages melted in the water. It was a it was a festival. I mean, I could hear for as far as the ocean existed. So the reason why I'm telling you that story is again in that moment as I started to get exhausted from swimming that long in the water, I felt it again. It's like, I could just swim. I could just swim away here. Oh my God, what a way to go. I could just swim away with the dolphins. So I'm quite sure that is the way I'm gonna go when I'm gonna leave this earth. There's not gonna be any drooling illness for Patricia Corey. When it's time to go, I'm jumping off a boat and swimming away. <laughs> but anyway, um, I just really, celebrate the fact that we, some of us are blessed with the opportunity, the experience of near death experience to test, to taste our immortality. And when I tell you all, I know with certainty that we don't die. It's not coming from an ego place at all. It's coming from a very humble place. I know with certainty for me that there is no death because I've twice died and come back. And that being in that other state is just as vibrant or more and real than is the 3D case we're in. So it fills me with joy, and it's something that I, I love to talk to people about because in this time, in this moment, there is about as much negativity as I could possibly bear going on out there. And it's uh, I was once on one of these threads. Somebody said I was into love and light. You betcha. But I'm not uh, airy fairy. I'm very grounded, and uh, as much as I love to talk about beauty and love and joy i'm also and you know it out there talking about conspiracy realism and uh trauma and all the things that we are facing and, and need to uh, overcome but uh, of all of this being able to experience or understand the near-death experience that other people at least are having can be the vehicle for really understanding immortality. We do not die, we transit. So when you hear thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people bringing to you, bring their own experience of themselves 
and how they're, they're changed. Most of them are changed and become very spiritual people, um, which is pretty interesting too. But um, pay attention when people talk about near-death experiences or what they've seen on the other side. Pay attention because these are, uh, let's say, markers for where we're going and beautiful um, tools for us to cling to or hold dear to us when we look at the condition of the world and these imminent catastrophes and Armageddon around the corner and nuclear holocaust and, and uh, all the things that keep us terrified every moment that more and more people are having these experiences so they're bringing you they're bringing us their experience of them and uh if you're lucky enough and i'm not suggesting that having a almost drowning is lucky but in a way it is I, in a way i think that it's it's been necessary for me to have had those experiences in order to bring to as many people as can hear uh, my understanding of immortality based on my experience of it. And so I wouldn't not live that, those experiences. But I do want to say that on your own spiritual path, on mine, there are these incredible moments, markers that are leaps and bounds moments. And surely that, surely grabbing onto a rock in, the, in a tumultuous sea and then finding yourself up on this cliff with someone giving you mouth to mouth who then disappears. I mean, how extraordinary is that really? What do you think? I think it's extraordinary and I've never publicly shared it. Like I said, I'm much more interested in what's happening with you and I already know what's happening with me. But I thought that it would be a good day to share that with you and um, get people thinking more. You know that this little adventure I'm on with a moment of Zen, which is no longer a moment, um, I want to utilize to Talk about a lot of things you already know. Uh, there's not necessarily some earth-shattering news coming out of Patricia Corey, but uh, that we have a chance to just contemplate some beautiful things and without having to get heady and lost in rhetoric and bouncing around a lot of gobbledygook as far as I'm concerned in some of our circles of information. I like to reach out and touch you with my experience, with my love, my heart, my concerns, whatever, whatever's happening in the little head here, uh, those moments I wanna share. So I am gonna keep this a little bit shorter than some of my other messages. And uh, thank you as always for just popping in and saying, what is this woman talking about now? And ask yourselves this question, uh, do you really understand your immortality? And if you do, if you truly understand it, then nothing can blow you away. No talk of nuclear holocaust, no craziness from these maniacal people we call leaders. None of it can blow you away if you understand that you're just passing through here. And uh, always I invite you to make sure you enjoy it as much as you possibly can and take from this experience of being alive all the beauty all the wonder all the laughter the joy that you possibly can and bring that with you when you're on the other side okay that's my spiel for today please remember i uh do need to keep telling you for those of you who haven't read the book there's a lot of what i just got finished mentioning regarding the heady more complex conversation and ideas in the New Syrian Revelations. If you haven't read it yet, please get your copy. It's doing really well, but of course, the better it does, the more I can bring more books to you. So I appreciate you getting your copy. And by the way, make sure you get the physical copy. 
Why? People are saying, oh my God, Patricia, I picked up the book, my hand started to vibrate. Or I, I, I have the book open and there's, there's a strange blue light emanating off the pages. Something's happening with this book. I think it's a vehicle. I think it's actually, uh, I should probably not verbalize this, but I'm going to. Um, I think it's a vehicle for activation. And when you hold it in your hands, and by the way, even, even I, who am the channel for this, when I first picked up the actual book, I started getting tingling in my, behind my, uh, the back of my neck, which is always a sign, and tingling in my hands and whatever. So if you get a copy of it, be sure you get a physical copy of it. All right, that's it. I just met, said I would mention the dolphin trip. I'm about to close this trip. The England Magic Mystery Tour is closed now. Oh boy, we're gonna have fun. And I'm closing the the dolphin whale experience return to Atlantis in the Azores in May. I'm closing it on Friday. So please don't be a fence sitter because it always happens that people say, oh please, oh please. And I can't do it because I have to return unused hotel rooms that are blocked to the hotels. So it's Friday if you wanna be on that trip. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, please write to me right away and um, that's it for now I've, I'm able to I learned, boy I'll tell you am I savvy or what I've now figured out how to download these live interviews from uh, Facebook and post them on YouTube so uh, I am inviting you, you all to please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have to rebuild it because the other one got blocked. And uh, I'm trying to create plenty of, of vehicles to reach you when others come down, if you get my drift. So please take time when you read this to, um, if you like what I'm bringing you, to please like my YouTube channel too. And I will come to you soon with yet another moment of Zen. This is Patricia Corey. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, and if you're wondering what this is, look at this. My beautiful new orchid has uh, blossomed. So that's what's bonking me in the head. <laughs> All right, lovelies. Thank you for listening as always. And I will be back with you soon. And until then, feel my love around you. This is Patricia Corey signing out.